My name is Arvan Krishnan and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this series of videos, we're going to look at some of the advanced functionalities in SOLIDWORKS simulation, which includes the nonlinear analysis and the vibration analysis. So in this study, we just have a static analysis. It's a it's something similar to a cantilever beam with one end fixed and a force on the other end. And this is just a static analysis where one of the assumptions that's made is that your model is uh, undergoes very small deformations. As can be seen here, the part directly goes downward, which is representative of the direction of the force. Now, there is an option inside the static analysis in the properties where a large displacement flag can be turned on. Uh, what this does is when you run the study, the force is applied with varying increments and the stiffness of your part is calculated in each of those increments. So first about 13% was applied and then 63% followed by 100% of the force. In this case, it can be seen that with calculating the deformations uh, at multiple intervals, the displacement plot is going to be more accurate as compared to just a static analysis. One thing that cannot be controlled is we cannot view the results in each of the intermediate steps, nor can we control uh, how big each time step is taken, which brings us to the first capability of a nonlinear analysis where we look at a force control method where the progression of the analysis happens with a increase in the force. The force can be controlled with respect to pseudo time as done here where the force is just a linear increment with time. One thing that's different in a nonlinear analysis is that all the intermediate steps that are taken to reach the final position can also be seen while post-processing. In some of the properties of the analysis, here's the uh, inputs that determine what is the amount of the time step taken for the next iteration. The initial iteration is going to be 0 0.01 seconds and of course all of these values can be changed and then each subsequent iteration is going to be between 1 e negative 8 and 0 0.1. So there's a minimum of 10 iterations that are going to take place to reach the full 100%. If for any reason the solver is not able to reach convergence at this number, we are allowed five adjustments and it's going to go to a lower number and try to get a convergence. This is one of the benefits of using a nonlinear force control analysis. If you go to the advanced option, here is the force control that's currently selected. Once this is done, we can look at the displacement results and these results can be viewed at in different time intervals. So we can look at the maximum result, which in our case is after 13, is the 13th iteration. These results are pretty close to the results at the, of the static analysis with the large displacement flag turned on. But this might be slightly more accurate because we were able to have smaller time steps. Also, we can view our results at the different time intervals. So at about 55% of the load, this was how the deformation looked. In the next video, we're going to see how a displacement control works. Once again, this is Arvind Krishnan and Go Engineer.